Hello and welcome. In this session, I'm going to be setting up a project in the BitTitan Migration Wiz tool for Microsoft 365 tenant to tenant migration. I'm going to go through what we need to do for the service accounts, the MFA requirements, the modern auth, app registration, and creation of a project through to the verifying of credentials. Now, that is all very important when we first set up a project to make sure that everything is tied in correctly from the source to the target. If we get these things done correctly, the whole migration project will run very smoothly. So let's jump in and look at our first thing we need to do, which is create those service accounts. So I've gone ahead here and created a MIGWIZ zeotrobe.com. It's a global admin account. It'll be the service account we're going to use for everything from the source tenant. I'm going to create one in the target tenant as well as now we do need to make sure that MFA is not enabled for the account. If you've got a new tenant or standard security defaults on the tenant or even conditional access policies, it probably will have MFA turned on. So we need to make sure it's off. I'm now going to log in with that MIGWIZ account just to see if MFA is in fact turned on for that account now. So we use a quick incognito window. We'll log in as MIGWIZ at zeotrobe.com. And the password, sign in. And you will see that MFA is enabled for the tenant because it's now asking us for this more information required. So our first step is going to be to get rid of this or this account so it can log on smoothly through this incognito window. You need to make sure that's done correctly first. Uh, otherwise, uh, you won't be able to continue with that verification. So we'll jump back to the admin center. We will go to the Azure Active Directory. And you can see this is the new Microsoft Intra. Admin Center looks a bit different to what you might be used to, but it's all essentially the same content in there. In fact, if we go to the Azure AD here, you can see under properties where we'd expect to find those security defaults. And you can see it is protected by security defaults. We are going to go and turn these off. Now, what I would recommend is obviously having conditional access policies in place for the other accounts so that your tenant is still secure. But for the case of this one, we will, yeah, we are going to use conditional access and we will remove those. Uh, security defaults so we can continue with this process. And you can see after a few seconds, it's not protected by security defaults. Now, just as a quick note, if I go back to the user details panel here, if I went to multi factor authentication, this one would always say disabled as the, the standard uh, item here. Uh, that is normal that you'd have that disabled still prompting for MFA because of those security defaults. So that's where you go and find those. So we'll give that a few minutes just to take effect properly, but we'll go back then into the logon for the MIGWIZ account. And with the password in place, we'll sign in. And you can see there now it's bypassing that MFA registration. So this account does not have MFA on it, which is exactly what we need. So we can close out of this. And now we need to go ahead and do the app registration, which is really where that modern auth tie in for the migration wizard project comes in. So how we go about doing that is we jump into the Azure Active Directory again, and we need to go down to the applications here on the left hand side. And we want to go to app registrations. And this will show us all the app registrations we have for the tenant. We're going to go and create a brand new one. Here. So we give it a name here, we'll just call it Migration Wiz. We leave this top one selected, we only want that for the Zeotrobe only. And we do need to set a redirect URI, so we'll set it up as public client native. Now, this entry here, we cut and paste out of the help desk article, which you'll find on the BitTitan site. So if you do the project setup uh, details in the help center, it will give you this. I'm gonna paste it in so you can see what it is anyway, which is this here. So once we've done that, you'll hit register and that will create that application for us. Now, while we get this screen up, I will want to capture the client ID and the tenant ID out of here. We're going to need those a little bit later when we put those into the migration with project. I'm going to grab the whole thing and drop that into there. And likewise for this guy as well. up slightly and keep that for a little later on. 
Then we'll go to the authentication tab and we'll scroll down just a little bit because we do need to turn this on, the enable the mobile and desktop flows. That needs to be yes and save that. So next we're going to do the API permissions, which we'll put here and we'll say add permission. We want to say APIs my organization uses and we're going to do a search. Now the one we'll search for is Office 365. And you can see here we have 365 Exchange Online. And we want to give it delegated permissions. And then under EWS, we will give it access to all and add permissions. So when it jumps back to this screen, we go and click on the grant admin consent. Say yes, and that will produce that over here for us. Now I've just gone ahead and done that on the target tenant as well, which is now I've got these IDs as well. So we'll keep those for a little later on. But now we've finished with this, so we can close all of these windows down and just come back to our migration wiz. The next step, however, is what we would like to do is set up the application uh, permissions uh, on the source tenant. So we'll do that with PowerShell. Now this step just means that the migration with service account can have the impersonation rights on all of the source mailboxes to enable that migration to occur. So the, the easiest way to do that is inside PowerShell. And what we do is we connect to the Exchange Online, like so. So we'll run up a PowerShell window with administrator rights, and we're going to connect to the source tenant and we're going to set up those um, application impersonation rights for that migration with service account. Now, if you haven't used the PowerShell with the tenant before, you will need to install that Exchange Online module. So I'm just going to give you the command in here to do that for you, which is this one here. So we'll just go ahead and run that. And that will just install that latest version. If you've got an older version on there, this will go over the top of it and put the latest version onto it. So quite handy to do. As you can see here, I've already got 3.1 on the machine, but you can see that's how you would install that. Then what we do is we do a connect exchange online, and that will ask us to log in to that source tenant. I'll go in with my normal admin account for that one. Now, password that will then connect into the tenant, like so. If you've already done a similar thing in like this in the tenant before, you may already have the organization customization turned on, but that's the one you want to be turning on. There. Done that. That's probably going to come back and tell me that it's already been done. And as you can see, that is that's operation not required, already enabled. So, so that is good to go there. But now what we'll do is we'll create the new role assignment for the migration with service account. And we do that with this command. Yeah. Now, all of these commands are kept in the Help Center articles on the BitTitan website. So you can go and pick those up or you can just review it from here. But what we'll do here is we we'll just grab that, run that command, and that will create that for us. And you can see it's made that direct assignment in there for us. And that is basically all we need to do. We can close it out and we are done with that. Let's now create this project for this migration. So we'll go create project here. And it will be a standard mailbox project. So we'll give it a name, like so, and it is a new customer. We'll fill in the basic details here. These are all optional. You don't need to put those in if you don't want to, but we hit save on that and hit our next step, which will give us the endpoint. Now, this is the important one we set up for the uh, source account, which will say new for the endpoint, and we'll give it a name. It's called in that Zeotrobe M365 tenant. We'll select the endpoint type as being standard Microsoft 365. And this is where we'd say, yes, we do want to provide credentials. And we'll give it that username and password. This is that migration with service account that we set up earlier. So with those in place, we'll hit add. And that puts it in effectively there. Next step is we'll have our destination endpoint, which is obviously the target tenant, which we're migrating to. So we'll do a similar thing with that. So that is there with Microsoft 365 again. 
and once again the username and password for the service account we enter like so and once that's in again hit the next step and we're not going to be enabling coexistence on this one we don't need to uh, worry about that we will save and go to our summary now what i will get you to do is it's very easy to hey say save project and just carry on here but we do need to go into the advanced options and get those tenant ids and the application ids that we put earlier with that application registration let's get those in now now if you do skip that and hit save project you can go back to the advanced options and put them in but it's a good option now we've got them handy just to go into the advanced options here and get those put in for us so how we put those in is we hit the plus button here i'm going to set up and put in four items for the four we're going to put in and then i'm going to put cut and paste off of the help desk article what the uh, the item should be so let me just do that okay and there we go it's important that the uh, syntax is absolutely correct on these and that's why i choose to cut and paste them out of the article because it means they are absolutely correct but you can see here that the export is going to be the source tenant and the import will be the target tenant so i'm going to grab those items as you can see from here i'm going to put the these items here you see the client id from the source tenant pops in here and obviously with the others so let me just do those just like that and you can see what it looks like at the end so we would hit save there and then we can continue then after hitting save it'll take us down to the normal migration with window which we're going to do a quick add i'm going to add that uh, test user we've got in there it's a john smith person which i'll do just by putting the, the quick add and putting his details in here which we do like that and hit save item and close that'll take us into our main screen so our first step to make sure everything is done correctly with this migration so we can then continue is we select our user here and we will say start and we're going to do our verify credentials and that will go and make sure that everything we've done with the modern auth setup and the application impersonation and the credentials for the service accounts and everything is all tied together nicely and that the migration will in fact work so we hit okay on that it says submitted and we will come back and see what that's done in a few minutes time so after a quick refresh, we can see that that has completed its verification. Uh, that will be good for not just that account, but any other account. We're testing the modern auth and the application permissions that we put on there. Uh, everything looks to be correct, so we can continue with our migration. So at this point, I will finish this session. And thank you for watching, and we'll talk again soon. Bye.